Imagine this, your doctor checks your blood pressure and says it's low, but they don't tell you which number matters more. Is it the top number, your systolic? Or the bottom one, your diastolic? And here's the kicker, one of these could be silently putting your health at risk more than the other. Welcome to Health Pulse Haven where we break down complex health topics into actionable insights. In today's video, we're diving deep into low diastolic versus low systolic blood pressure, what they mean, why they happen, and which one could be more dangerous for you. Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to watch out for and how to protect your heart. Let's get started. Before we compare low diastolic and low systolic, let's get the basics down. Blood pressure is the force of your blood pushing against the walls of your arteries as your heart pumps. It's measured in two numbers, systolic and diastolic. Systolic, the top number, is the pressure when your heart beats, pushing blood out. Diastolic, the bottom number, is the pressure when your heart rests between beats. Normal blood pressure is around 120 over 80. But when either number drops too low, it's called hypotension, and that's where things get interesting. Low blood pressure might sound harmless, but it can signal serious health issues. So, which is worse, low systolic or low diastolic? Let's break it down step by step. Hypotension or low blood pressure is generally defined as a reading below 90 over 60. But it's not just about numbers, it's about how you feel. Symptoms like dizziness, fainting, fatigue, nausea, or even confusion can show up when your blood pressure is too low. Why? Because low blood pressure means your organs, like your brain and heart, might not be getting enough oxygen-rich blood. Now, let's talk causes. Low systolic or diastolic pressure can stem from different things. Dehydration, where less fluid in your body means less blood volume. Medications like diuretics or beta blockers can also drop your pressure. Then there are heart issues like a weak heart pump or irregular rhythms. Blood loss from injury or internal bleeding can lead to a sudden drop. Hormonal imbalances, like thyroid problems or adrenal insufficiency, play a role too. Even standing up too fast, known as orthostatic hypotension, or pregnancy can be culprits. But here's the thing. Low systolic and low diastolic don't always mean the same thing for your health. Let's explore what makes them different. Let's start with low systolic blood pressure, which is when the top number dips below 90. Systolic pressure reflects how forcefully your heart is pumping blood into your arteries. If it's too low, it could mean your heart isn't pumping strongly enough. This can happen because of heart conditions like heart failure or cardiomyopathy, where the heart muscle is weakened. Severe dehydration also lowers blood volume, decreasing pressure. And in life-threatening cases like septic shock or severe allergic reactions, the systolic number can crash. Low systolic pressure is often more alarming in emergencies because it can signal that your vital organs, like your brain, kidneys, and heart, aren't getting enough blood flow. For example, in cases of shock, a systolic reading below 90 can be life-threatening if not treated quickly. Here's a real-world scenario. If you're feeling faint, clammy, or have a rapid heartbeat, low systolic pressure could be the culprit. It's a sign your heart is struggling to keep up with your body's demands. But is it always more dangerous than low diastolic? Hold the thought, we'll compare them soon. Now let's talk about low diastolic blood pressure when the bottom number falls below 60. Diastolic pressure measures how much resistance your blood vessels have when your heart is at rest. If it's too low, it could mean your blood vessels are too relaxed or dilated, which can reduce blood flow to your heart muscle itself. Yes, your heart needs blood too. Causes of low diastolic pressure include aging. As we age, arteries can stiffen, but in some people, the vessels relax too much. Certain medications like vasodilators or alpha blockers widen blood vessels and lower diastolic pressure. Autonomic dysfunction, where your nervous system fails to regulate blood pressure properly, is another cause. And just like with systolic, severe dehydration or blood loss can play a role. Here's why low diastolic can be sneaky. It's often linked to coronary perfusion pressure, which is the pressure that feeds blood to your heart muscle during its resting phase. If this pressure is too low, your heart might not get enough oxygen, increasing the risk of heart damage over time. 
This is especially concerning for older adults or those with heart conditions. Okay, Health Pulse Haven crew, we're halfway through and here's where it gets critical. Low systolic and low diastolic both sound bad, but which one's more dangerous? Is it the immediate threat of low systolic cutting off blood to your organs? Or the sneaky, long-term risk of low diastolic starving your heart? Don't go anywhere because we're about to compare them head-to-head -head and reveal what doctors say about the risks. Plus, I'll share practical tips to manage low blood pressure and keep your heart healthy. Hit that like button if you're learning something new and let's keep going. So, the million dollar question. Which is more dangerous? The answer isn't black and white, it depends on the context. Let's break it down. Low systolic blood pressure is an immediate danger. It directly affects blood flow to vital organs. In emergencies like shock or heart failure, a systolic reading below 90 can lead to organ damage or even death if untreated. People at risk include those with heart disease, severe dehydration, or those in acute medical situations. Red flags to watch out for include fainting, confusion, or cold, clammy skin. If you see these signs, seek help immediately. Low diastolic blood pressure, on the other hand, is more of a long-term threat. It reduces blood flow to the heart muscle and can increase the risk of heart attack or heart failure over time, especially in older adults. People at risk include older individuals, those on certain medications, or people with autonomic nervous system disorders. The red flags are less obvious. Persistent fatigue, mild chest discomfort, or shortness of breath, these can be signs your heart isn't getting the oxygen it needs. Here's what many cardiologists say. Low systolic is usually more dangerous in the short term, while low diastolic poses a serious risk in the long term. If both numbers are low, that's a bigger warning sign. It means your body isn't circulating blood efficiently, and you should consult a doctor to find out why. Now that we know the risks, let's talk about what you can do if you have low systolic or diastolic blood pressure. Here are seven practical, doctor-approved tips. First, stay hydrated. Water boosts your blood volume and pressure. Aim for at least 8 to 10 glasses of water a day unless your doctor has advised otherwise. Dehydration is a common cause of both low systolic and diastolic readings, and it's easy to fix. Second, consider adding a little extra salt to your diet, but with caution. Salt helps your body retain water and raises blood pressure. If you're already on a low-sodium diet or have kidney issues, check with your doctor first. Third, compression stockings. These are especially helpful if you have symptoms like dizziness when standing. They help blood flow from your legs back to your heart, preventing it from pooling and reducing sudden drops in pressure. Fourth, eat small, frequent meals. Large meals can cause a drop in blood pressure, especially after eating. This is called postprandial hypotension and it's common in older adults or those with autonomic dysfunction. Fifth, avoid sudden position changes. Stand up slowly, especially after sitting or lying down. Orthostatic hypotension is a common cause of dizziness and fainting due to rapid blood pressure drops. Sixth, monitor your blood pressure at home. Use a validated monitor and track your readings consistently. Keeping a BP log can help your doctor make better treatment decisions and catch problems early. Seventh, talk to your doctor about your medications. If you're taking blood pressure medicines and notice consistently low readings or new symptoms, you might need a dose adjustment. Never stop medications on your own. Always consult your doctor. If you're experiencing symptoms like fainting, chest pain, blurred vision, or weakness, don't wait. Get medical help. Low blood pressure isn't always dangerous, but it's a signal that your body needs attention. And there you have it, Health Pulse Haven family. Low systolic blood pressure can be a short-term emergency, while low diastolic might pose a silent, long-term threat to your heart. The key is knowing your numbers, recognizing symptoms, and taking action to keep your heart healthy. If this video helped you understand blood pressure better, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who needs to hear this. Don't forget to subscribe to Health Pulse Haven and hit the bell icon for weekly health tips to keep your pulse strong. Drop a comment below, have you ever dealt with low blood pressure? What worked for you? Let's keep the conversation going. Until next time.
Stay healthy and keep your heart pumping.